Are we supposed to start? I think so. Okay. So, um, my name's Steve. I work at Fairchild Semiconductor, which is, uh, I don't know if any of you know exactly where we are, but we're in South Portland, real close to the mall. And we share campus with National Semiconductor, so there's actually two separate companies making wafers. And we're a little bit unusual in that we actually make our wafers here. So all these wafers here, which these are, these are six-inch wafers, we actually make them in South Portland. Um, we don't make the final product. We take these wafers and we ship them to Asia where they get, they get glued to a piece of uh, blue tape and then they get cut with a saw, which is very similar to what they use for brain surgery. So it's a saw that can cut through the wafer, but not through the tape. And then there's a machine that picks them out and puts them into packages like this. And this is, a, this is actually the motherboard from a Motorola cell phone that's about maybe four, four years old. So this is not state-of-the-art anymore. But each of, the little, each of the little black things has a product in it, that's, some of which we make. And if you look at these, you can see that there's a lot of different, the little squares on these wafers. And normally, these are reject wafers. Normally, you wouldn't be allowed to touch them. But each of those little squares is, is, is one product that we would sell. These are no, the teeny little things. Those teeny little things. The bigger things are, are test patterns we use to control the process. So, um, and you can see, like, this wafer only has two test patterns, that wafer has five, that one has some, uh, just two. As we get better uh, on making a particular kind of wafer, you have less and less test patterns, because you caught, test patterns cost you money, because you don't make product where there's test patterns. So, um, consuming part of the wafer with the test, and, and as you get better and, and a process stabilizes, you can use less and less. Like, if you look here, this one has like five test patterns on it. You can see how they get, when they get cut up, those don't ever get used. You can see it when you look at an angle. Yeah. Can you see it? See, there's see some the things that are different. Angle. Yeah. One, two, three, four, four five, yes. maybe more. So, just to know how I got into this, um, I, so I grew up, you know, during uh, the race to the moon and everything, and the earliest memory I can have is, is as far as following any event is the, is the whole space race. So I watched all of the liftoffs, all the landings and everything. So I got really interested in it, so I went to an engineering school and then uh, uh, I majored in electrical engineering. And, and one of the things that I, I liked electrical engineering a lot, but one of the things I didn't like about it was that a lot of what you do in electrical engineering you can't really see. But when I started get, getting interested in semiconductors, because I really liked the fact that you could look through the microscope and actually see something. Because when I grew up, I also built lots of models and airplanes and spaceships and things like that. So I liked building things. And you know, at, what you're really doing here is you're building something. Because, I mean, this looks flat and everything, but it's actually about 30 different layers placed one on top of each other. and. It's, it's all designed in a very intricate way to, to do certain things electrically. Um, we put different, uh, this is silicon, and we, uh, we put dopants in like boron, phosphorus, arsenic. Uh, what kind of current goes through there? How know, does it, what, what kind of current is being used? Oh, what uh, um, voltages, what Well, milliamps? something like this would, you know, each little square, this is probably a... Uh, it's either a 5 volt or a 3.3 volt operating voltage in this. Um, typically, outputs are, some, are in the milliamp range, although they can be higher depending on some products. I mean, we make some products that go all the way up to amps, even through little tiny circuits, and we make some products that go up to 700 volts, which is lately what we've been doing. We, Ten years ago, we did almost all 3 volt and 5 volt, but in recent years, we've really switched to making more analog circuits and using higher voltages. So we. We'll, we'll work all the way up to 700 volts on certain products, and that's that takes a whole lot of trickiness to do 700 volts in a in a little tiny die. Uh, it's an interesting because there's lots of expensive equipment. Um, like in our fab in Western Avenue, we have about a billion dollars worth of equipment installed there. So the building itself is worth maybe 10 million dollars, and the equipment's worth about a billion dollars. So it's it's. You know, the, um, the equipment, for instance, that prints, that prints the, it's kind of like a big camera that actually does the printing, it's called a stepper, and those, 
run about um, six, between six and ten million dollars each, and we have about ten or twenty of them, between ten and twenty of them in our fab. How soon before they're outdated and have to upgrade? Um, is, this a, is this something that can be adapted so that you can use it 10, 15, 20 years from now? Well, so what happens is that, that um, the, the top of the line stepper we use, we only have one or two of them, and there's certain layers that, that matter on that, and then there are certain layers that are not as critical. So a stepper will migrate from doing the critical layers to doing the non-critical layers to doing maybe the super non-critical layers and then be out the door, and that might take 10 years. So a stepper will be state-of-the-art for maybe three years. Um, we depreciate the tools over six years. So it's a huge reinvestment process. It is, and also it's something we have to think about when we're designing the process because we have 30 different layers, and, and we can design them in ways that send them to different tools depending on uh, on how we design them. So we have to know which layers are the ones that really give you the money, you know, the bang for the buck, and which layers you just have to make it work and it can be more crude. Because especially after, once a tool is six years old, it doesn't cost us anything anymore because it's depreciated. So that tool becomes essentially free to use. So there's always a business calculation that goes into every decision you make, like what tool are you going to send this to? Because we, my whole job is to, is to figure out how to make this wafer have two things, have more dye on it and cost less. So right now this wafer costs us about $300 to make and this product has about 50,000 dyes. So you can divide those two numbers and figure out that the dye costs like six cents or something to make and we sell it for maybe 18 or 20 cents. So we have a pretty good margin. It takes about the same amount to package it is to make it too. So if we can figure out a way to get another 500 die or 1,000 die on the wafer, then those are all free. Those just go straight to the bottom line. But if we can figure out a way to make the wafer for $310 instead of $320, that $10 just goes straight to the bottom line. And How much electricity do you consume? We consume a lot. We consume, I'm going to say... 200 megawatts, something like that. 200 megawatts is a daily consumption? Steady hourly. state, steady state. We run tw megs. 24 hours a day, seven so days a week. Because we have, um, we have um, about two-thirds of that goes into one area of our, of our factory, the Epi area, that's very power intensive. Yeah, that's why we're, we actually buy our power, um, we, we have our own step down. So we buy it, uh, we buy it at, at whatever, two, two, um, three, okay, whatever they send it with state to state long distance transmission. DC transmission. No, it it's, goes, it's AC, but, well, but it it's, goes through right. long distances is DC, but it goes through a transformer. Right. Yeah. And, and, well, we step it down, I know that, but we, we, if you remember the ice storm, the area around Main Mall didn't have any power outages, it's because we have our own step down there and we actually sold, we have our own power company as well, so we can sell the step down electricity. We sell it to National, for instance. I see. But that's, power is really, really important to us, so that's why we we're always lobbying the governor to, to make the line up to Canada so that we can get their nuclear power because it's, it, we've also considered making our own natural gas power generation station. Right. Yeah. So your step down is right off the 11.5, uh, 13.9 line from it's, CMB, or is it step down from from the line coming down from Canada, which it's, is 115,000 Yeah, I thought we buy most of our energy from Ohio or something okay. like that. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you can if, have participate. If you drive shift. by Western Avenue, the you know the Coke is and us. I know where Western Avenue is. Right. Participants, well, could you share? On shift. the staple side of our building, and you'll see our step down there. Yeah, that way. If you were in, if you were like at uh, sort of sort of where the furniture store is, there, Cabot Furniture.